Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game of hip hop is called Partition, but it's featuring Deckhand. Deckhand is the CCG version of the Partition game bundle in which you will be having to choose a captain as well as a deck, and you're going to be doing a tactic style war game going back and forth trying to destroy your opponent's captain. Now, the way you're going to be doing that is drawing cards from a deck and simply using Corite to play either minions or uh, other things onto the board and moving them around to deal damage. Damage. You're going to be using your base damage, and also based on the type of character you're going to be using, which is actually going to be a gamer of sorts, to attack. Now this is all a singular game based on a whole world of games in which you're going to be using different gamers to play these different games. Now specifically you're going to start with certain gamers in the game partition, and you're going to be able to gain more of them and more of them. But this one specifically, we're just going to go into the details of how to play this specific game using the base gamers that you would be normally using. Alright, so let me go ahead and show you what it looks like as well as the setup for the game. So here we have the game Deckhand, and included we've actually attached different items from the game, the partition, a base game, to the characters we'll be using here. They are the gamers, as well as their basic captain. Now to set the game up, it's pretty simple. Each player is going to get their own unique deck that they're going to get to choose, and in future variants of the game, it will also include a deck building aspect, as well as including you're going to be thinking of these core, right? three of each of them. Players are going to get a hand of five cards from their deck, as well as putting all the life tokens, character tokens, and ability action tokens here. You're also going to have a little board. This is going to be a, a three different cards. You're just going to put them together just like that to form the field. And then make sure, yeah, you've shuffled and drawn. Uh, you're then going to take your hero and place it, or your captain, and place it on either side of the board from each other, just like this. And this is going to be the game board. You're going to have nine spaces in which characters are going to move around. Each of the characters has, has a range, a base damage, and health, as well as the type of character it is and from what game it's from. Some of them are going to be uh, passive abilities, like this one he can move adjacently. We normally can only move up, down, left, or right. And then over here, he's, he can spend a Corite to allow himself to draw a card. And it can't be formed more than once. Uh, this character also has abilities as well. In your hand of five cards, after you've drawn them, you can choose to mulligan once, and then you're going to keep what you have. Each of the cards is going to have a cost, which is going to be on the top right-hand side, as well as what game it's from over here, or the type of deck it's from. And then over here is going to be a range, same, same old same, as well as the different passives or active abilities you're going to be using throughout the game. You're going to be able to spend these Corite as uh, money and placing them down on the board which you're going to be trying to fight the captain. So let me tell you about a turn and how it's going to work to try and destroy the captain on the other side of the field. In the game Deckhand, it's pretty simple. You're going to be using your characters W Factor and X Factor. W Factor is for the main attack, X Factor is going to be for that counter attack. You're also going to use any equipment attached to your characters, and you need to make sure you select the character best for the job because you'll only need one player to be uh, using this specific deck. You're also going to start with five cards in your hand. Now, if you're playing as the first player, you can draw a card at the beginning of your turn like any other turn, but you're only going to use two cards to start your turn off. Every turn after that, including the second player's first turn, Turn, you'll get three Corite to spend. And you'll be spending it to buy cards, and they have the cards prices up here, the right the top right hand corner. You can spawn them on any of your spawning zones, which are right in front of you. And if the board is ever filled, you're going to be then putting a card down and pushing the board forward, and the player that is in the very far back will get destroyed. However, if it's the captain of the other team, then instead that captain's going to take three damage, stay on the board, and then the character in front is going to be removed instead. You're trying to destroy the enemy's captain. By doing so, you're going to be rolling dice. Successes are 4 plus, but in actually with the game when it's fully done, it'll have a success or a failure rate. And you also need to use your base damage on each of the characters. So if it's you got an, a W factor of 2 and then you got a base factor of 2, you're going to roll 2 dice. If you get 2 4 ups, you're going to add those 2 to the 2 base damage and you get 4 damage and you hit the captain. Afterwards, there's going to be a counterattack. So there's no armor in the game. It just goes directly to HP, depending on the amount of successes you have. After you place a unit, it's basically not able to be used until the next turn. However, any unit that's already on the field for a turn is able to be used, and including the second player's leader, the second, the second player on the first turn of that second player is going to be able to use that leader to attack. Killing the leader is the only objective in the game, and the most important, because once that leader is destroyed, the game is over, and you'll calculate the winner and the loser's victory points, as well as giving them money. All right, let me show you how to play a couple turns of the game and how to attack as well as use some abilities. All right, so we're back down here again. And as you can see, Papau and Dudetail are going to be fighting each other. The, the Papau has Starbounder and Dudetail has Overseer, and they're in their spots. Every player's got their five cards, and since Papau's going first, he's only going to start with two Corite. You've got your five cards to start, and he's going to begin his turn by drawing a card. He's going to look through his hand of cards to determine what he wants to play. This one here is pretty strong, but he can't play it because it costs three. This one here does damage. Uh, 
to each enemy crew. This one here will heal his crew. This one here is a simple character. And then we've got a brazen mercenary. We'll play that one for two. That says that uh, the first attack adjacent uh, against this crew member is ignored. So we'll put this little here token here to remind us that that's what happened. Now, you can move your characters up, down, left, or right, but you can't attack adjacently. You can't attack diagonally, and you cannot move diagonally. However, with Starbounder here, he can because he has a passive that says Swift and allows him to do so. Uh, he will just go ahead and end his turn there because he can't use this unit the first time he summons it. He doesn't want to move his captain. The next player is going to go and uh, he's going to simply draw a card from his uh, deck. And he's going to then, he's got three Korite to spend as opposed to uh, two Korite. And he will summon, let's see what's good here. The Unbroken. When he attacks an enemy, it damages every enemy in that target's zone. One range, two base damage, nine HP. You can summon him in any of these locations. He'll summon him there. And I think he'll also leave his Overseer right there. We're not going to have him moved. And uh, once again, the game will continue. The next player is going to draw his card. And what does he got here? He got a crack shot. What's that say? Assign five damage to a, one crew. That's pretty good. How about Fusion Trooper? He's strong. He's got his three Korite. He'll spend the three Korite. And now let's go ahead and get into some damage. So move this character up one, and uh, he's got a range of one, which works. If it was a range of two, he'd be able to shoot from here, and he's got a base damage of three. Now, whenever we're doing attacks for this game, specifically, we're going to click the, the, the W, and this character has it with the W of one, which means he gets to roll one die, as well as the fact that he's got a test server, which will let him get one automatic success on every wisdom-based roll. So he's always going to do at least one damage from the rolling aspect, and if he gets a four plus here, he would have gotten a done two, but he didn't. So he gets one damage from the roll, and then he's going to get a base damage of three, which is four damage to the unbroken. So the unbroken has nine health and took four damage, and then now he gets to do a counterattack, and counterattacks is done by the X factor of Dutel, which is three here. So he'll take three damage from the unbroken, roll the die. He's got two plus a base damage of two, which is going to be four damage back. Attack and counterattack. And when that happens, this, this, this ability triggers here, and we remove that, and he doesn't take the damage. But the next time he will, he does. Uh, he can then uh, and make sure you use everything for the character movement and attacking or attacking and then movement and then the character is frozen and then you can use your next character. He was just summoned though, so this guy can move up if he wants to. I think he'll do that. Remember though, attack, uh, captains cannot attack each other though. They're only going to be able to attack the other little mini guys here. But your objective is to attack the other player's captain with your minions and try and destroy them. So he is uh, going to be done and now it's uh, the uh, overseer's turn. He's going to draw a card. And what does he want to do here? I think he's going to play a Soul Keeper for two. And I think he's going to save these guys here. These are just all abilities, pretty much. This one will let him spawn drones, but he doesn't have any currently. And so he can use the Unbroken if he wants to attack this guy here, and I think he's going to do that. So he'll take three die for his W, and then he's going to have a base damage of two plus one, because it's got a four up of one. So that is going to be three damage to the Brazen Mercenary. And the Brazen Mercenary will also get a counterattack of three plus his base damage, which is going to be five damage to the Unbroken. So three, four, and five, it hits him. Now this is nine damage here, and he has a total health of nine. And uh, remember when this enemy uh, attacks an enemy, it damages every crew in the, in the zone. So this guy would actually take damage as well. But after that, he's lost his nine health. And so after the combat is over and resolved, the damage is removed, and this character flips face down as a corpse. Why would that happen? Well, because there's characters in the game you can use, like the drones here, which will let you place them on corpses throughout the game, which can be very useful tactically. And the game's going to go like that, back and forth, using your abilities, using your range. Remember, you can never attack adjacently unless a card says so. You can never move adjacently unless a card says so. And uh, your objective is to kill your opponent's leader. You can use any of the abilities that the cards have, as well as remembering to use special abilities like, for instance, the Brazen Mercenary's little passive ability, or the Overseer's ability to remove up to two drones from the remove two drones from the discard pile and put them back in your hand. And once one of the leaders has been removed from the game due to too much damage, the winner of the game is the player who did so. So a couple caveats now. The first thing is whenever you summon a unit, it might not be able to do an action, but it can move. Also, whenever you step on a corpse, that corpse is going to get removed from the game. So it's just there to be used for the specific deck that has corpses in it. But if somebody else were to stomp on that corpse, it goes away. 
Also, whenever you attack a unit and it dies due to damage, it does not get to use a counterattack. So counterattacks are only reserved for characters that are alive. It seems kind of obvious, but it's it's not really while you're playing the game. Um, not, and also to note, whenever you will use one of the ability cards, you have to follow exactly as it says. Removing two damage tokens from each of your allied crew. Make sure all of them will take off their damage. It's just basic uh, things to explain. Nothing, nothing too complicated. But they do have some different abilities on the cards. If this crew is uh, if crew is killed, roll a die. On a success, return this card back to your hand. So it has specific abilities on some of the cards that will let you bring them back to your hand, specifically this deck here, as well as bringing them from the graveyard into your hand or playing them onto the different corpses and whatnot not. Each deck is going to be individual of its own, and uh, later use of the game might include some deck building aspects. Currently, there's just the two basic decks that's going to be used in the partition, in the partition tournament. However, uh, there might be more to it, and um, different commanders and all that kind of stuff. But right now, this is what's in the game. All right, let me tell you what I think about it. So, Deck Hand. Deck Hand is a basic tactical strategy game. It's a two-player game in which you're going to be moving around the board. It's fairly simple, not extremely complex is how it works, and the decks have their own uniqueness to them. Now, I've seen this game before in a lot of different variations. Uh, this one specifically has a bunch of unique features that involve uh, everything is very fairly balanced, right? And the different decks have a different aspect to them. One is kind of a graveyard deck, the other one is kind of more of a captain killer slash uh, unique little abilities like not taking damage the first time, that, that kind of a thing. And the, both captains are unique and interesting in their own way, and I like both decks. How much replayability is there in this basic game? Eh, there's a little bit. The most interesting aspect really is putting the partition um, aspect, the main game, into this game, which will give you the ability to add the item cards and the player cards. The movement around the board's fine. Everything works very well and flows very well. As a game all on its own, I don't know if I personally get it. However, with the partition tournament, I think it's very useful because it is a very simple, basic game that will give you that little tactics aspect, a little taste of the game as it goes through. And it's also going to give you the ability to get more money for the next specific games that you're going to be playing. You could, however, if you do enjoy this game, play it multiple times over multiple rounds. And it's not too easy to where you're not going to enjoy it really, and like, not, 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 might, not, might not make um, a lot of like interesting decisions, but it's also not too complex either. It's got that like nice right in the middle aspect, right? And it works really well as a game as far as the L uh, CCG is concerned. I think I'm going to enjoy it more when I start seeing the different decks come out for it and the different captains so I can actually make my own deck as far as that goes. But for right now, it's kind of a little micro game. It works well. I definitely play it again, but I think it works best when you're playing with the full-on partition aspect of the game. You need to have all three, really, uh, in order to enjoy this game. If not, though, if I had to choose between just getting two of the three, this would probably be my least of the three, though, because I enjoyed the two other two, and I'll explain that more in the next video. But anyway, that's the basic aspect of what I think about the game, as well as how it's kind of played. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. As well as checking out Partition and all three of the games included. If you want to see a couple other of the games in, in this little bundle of games, check out the rest of our reviews. They're either coming out or are already out in the description below. Also, go check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our friends, unfil uh, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. Tons of reviews and tutorials there. All right, guys, let's all get for this one. And as always, look forward to seeing you next time.